Hello, in this clip let's do uh, income inequality and how economists uh, model that. Okay, we model it using something called a Lorenz curve and this is a topic that uh, has been getting a lot of press in the last couple of years as uh, things have been changing and then I'm going to present a couple different ways of looking at uh, looking at that. Okay, so first off I encourage you to go and uh, plug in your own salary but uh, we'll do uh, we'll do mine here so this is thing the BBC put up how long would it take you to earn a star player salary so I live here in the United States made about fifty two thousand dollars last year and uh, we'll compare ourselves to Neymar you can choose a different player if you'd like uh, but let's see how I compare okay so it takes uh, Neymar about ten minutes to earn what I earn in a week okay at my current salary I'm gonna have to work for nine hundred and seventy eight years just to earn what he earns in one year and uh, and this is important to think about um, when we think about what what we've been doing with these labor markets right so where does a where does a wage come from well remember the wage is the value of the marginal product of your labor right so this tells us that Neymar is very productive at his job and the value of the product that he produces is very highly valued right so people giving uh, economics lectures uh, isn't as valued as much and uh, there's a much bigger supply of us so we're much more replaceable than uh, than say Neymar or star star soccer player or star athlete um, and you end up with uh, with this this inequality in the wage okay so you could get all I could get all upset about it or uh, or I could get look at who else I compare it to so this says I earn one and a half times the average wage in my country sorry 1.2 times the way I've ever waited in my country so I'm doing a little bit better than everybody else in the United States and that's pretty cool and I'm doing much better than everybody in the United, in the rest of the world okay so 2.6 times the the wage here right so um, other way to look at this too uh, Neymar earns uh, over a thousand times more than the best uh, female soccer player plays in the United States okay now since I've been talking here I've earned 16 cents good for me Average uh, Americans earn 14 cents, and Neymar is up over 165 dollars. So this is uh, kind of a cool little uh, little thing here you can you can do. We can look at uh, all kinds of things, right? So there, this is the richest U.S. states. This is from about 2013. Uh, in this is this term here, ultra high net worth individual. Okay, so it's sometimes it's calculated as 200 million dollars or more in wealth and other times it's uh, 250 million dollars so you'll see that uh, quite a bit and I hope that you become one of those people and donate money to Pima College so we can get uh, get some better stuff here uh, not that our stuff is bad but to just upgrade so California has uh, you know over 13,000 of these people New York has 9,000 of these people Florida a uh, bunch in Texas not very many in New Mexico okay this is uh, from the Motley Fool uh, Forbes magazine 2013 list uh, this number of billionaires so none in Alaska none in New Mexico nine in Arizona you should look up those folks hope that uh, as a business student this could be you uh, one day is 111 in California two in Oregon so and kind of interesting now just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean that you keep it right if you spend it all like Alan Iverson here uh, you end up bankrupt right so he's earned over 200 million dollars in his lifetime and he uh, doesn't have a lot of money this is fairly typical okay so, um, ESPN has a, a program on this it's called broke right? it's pretty good on uh, you know going up and going down okay this is the poverty rate by uh, by group okay so the poverty rate is a calculation nobody really likes but what it is is it's a calculation based on the kids that you have and the income that you make uh, one of the best ways to be uh, to not be in poverty here is going to go ahead and be married, right? So married folks, uh, you know, that double income, uh, they're able to save more, they're able to save faster. They tend to break up a little bit less frequently than uh, just couples who don't get married. Okay, so uh, it's a different way to look at it. Okay, so what you want to write in your notes here is uh, the, the economics way to do this is called what's called the Lorenz curve. Lorenz curve shows relative income distribution, so it shows um, it shows how uh, equal or unequal a country is in terms of wealth. Okay, so let's we're going to draw one. We're going to graph one here. Um, but before we do, here's just the data, right? So this is 2008, 
2000, 19, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and in the United States, we get pretty good data on this because the census has um, income uh, numbers that they get a hold of every 10 years. And then we also get uh, IRS data by groups and by households. So it's pretty good. So what this, what this shows us is back in 1935, the lowest 25 or 20% 20 earned 4.1% of the income. The second fifth earned 9.2. The next fifth earned 14.1. The fourth fifth earned 20.9. And the richest fifth earned 51% of the income. Okay. And that of, of this top fifth, the richest 5% earned half of that. Right. So the richest uh, were doing very well. As the years went on, you can t you can see here the the poor folks got a little bit bigger share of the income. Then it went back down. Uh, for these guys, got a bigger share. Oh, kind of went back down. These guys, same same trend. And these guys earned less, but now they're going back up. Okay, so um, so some people see this is a huge problem, right? That that the wealthiest here. Are becoming wealthier relative to the poorer here. Um, other people say, "Well, uh, you know, you're not stuck here. You're, you know, you could be like Allen Iverson. You could move back down here, or uh, you could have grown up not wealthy. You could have moved up, right? So it's a sociology question about how people move up and move down. Some economics research too. So let's uh, let's do a Lorenz curve here. Okay. So the way. The way that we do this, um, first of all, there's what's called the line of equality. And where this came from is this on the on the x-axis is a percent of population. Okay, so the, this is 100%, this is 0%, this is 50%, right? But you can calculate this in fifths. So we'll, what, what you'll see here is done on these here. Okay, and you may have actually heard somebody say talk about the one percent, right? The richest one percent. That is these folks right here. Okay, so they're right, right in there. But theoretically, uh, this let's do this line of equality business. So this is the percent of uh, income. Okay, so theoretically, uh, twenty percent of the population, if everybody was equal, would earn twenty percent of the the income. Okay, and 40% of the population would be earning 40% of the income. 60% of the population would earn 60% of the income. You, you get the idea of where this is going, right? So if everybody was equal, we'd be right along this line, right? But we're not equal. Uh, there's some inequality, okay? Some people are do better than others, okay? It's just a, it's just a function of capitalism. So let's, let's graph one of them. Let's do 2008, that's fine. Okay, so the bottom fifth earned 4%. So this is 10%. So the bottom fifth, let's use this green color here. Bottom fifth is going to be right here. Let me make the dots fairly big, okay? Then the next, the second fifth is 9.6. Now it's 9.6 up from, because the, the um, poorest 40% includes these guys. So it's going to be about 13%. So this is 10, so we're right about there, okay? The middle fifth is another 15. So we'll go about to here, so 5, 10, 15. So right about here, okay? And then the fourth fifth is going to earn another 23%. So... 10, 20, right about there. And this leaves the wealthiest fifth just under 47%. Uh, and this top fifth percent here, they earn 20%. So they're going to be right there. So we're going to connect the dots. Okay, because a hundred, and then there's going to be a dot here. It's a hundred percent of the income is earned by a hundred percent of the people, and zero percent of the income is earned by zero percent of the Americans. Okay, so connect the dots here. Uh, 
and this gives us our Lorenz curve. Okay, so what this is is uh, the further away, the more bowed out this is, the less equal a country is. So if I had a country that kind of looked like this, whoops, the last part there screwed that up, but um, this would be a country where the top 20% or 90% of the income, right? So this would be a place where you got a lot of unskilled workers here earning very small wages. It could be because of a monopsony, it could be a number of reasons, skills, uh, could be the, the country doesn't trade much, uh, and then you've got this elite group that earns tons and tons. And then this country is much less uh, equal than this country, which is the United States. So um, you can actually see now if, if this curve is, is bending this direction, then it's getting less equal. And if the curve is going this direction, like it was in uh, the 60s through the 80s, then it's becoming more equal. Okay, so this is this is a Lorenz curve, and this is how I got that Lorenz curve. Okay, so let's go back to slides real quick. Okay, so yeah, this is just kind of a graph reading type thing, right? So this. This one here is, is the this is then fourths. So the first twenty five percent has five percent of the national income, and the last twenty five percent earns seventy percent. So this is a pretty unequal country. Okay, uh, this one's a little blurry. Sorry, but uh, might ask you a question on the test like the upper twenty percent earns what percent of the income? Well, you, here's the top twenty percent, and it's what's ever left over. Follow this over here. You know, just just over 50% of the income is earned by the richest 20%. And this is similar to uh, what we see in the United States. So one idea that some people have is they say, uh, let's do some progressive taxes and tax the rich more than the poor. So if we're uh, here before on this Lorenz curve, we're going to tax these guys and give it to these guys. Okay, and that'll give us if we value equality, uh, we'll give it to here. Okay, so there's a clip. Uh, I encourage you to watch it. Um, and it has to do with social mobility and some economists, uh, you know. And, and I want you to think about reasons why uh, to support his idea. Reasons why this is a you know crisis. Uh, he comes from France, so it's just revolutionary ideas. Ha ha ha. But uh, you can also think about why why is this maybe not as big of a deal. Right, and so what? What do the poor have? Right, so this is really what he's talking about. He's going to talk about labor share, uh, how much money the the workers get in terms of uh, of, of income. Okay, and uh, you'll see that that number is declining. Okay, does it matter? Does it not matter? Okay, one thing to think about is um, there is a difference between wealth and income. So wealth is the personal assets that you have: real estate, stocks, bonds. Uh, and then income is actually the, the amount of money that households earn, so the amount of money that's coming in, right? And there's a there's an issue with uh, with debt, right? It often you often borrow money against assets that you have, or you borrow money to acquire more assets. And do the poor have the same uh, access to those credit markets, right? That's a an issue that uh, that could be thought of through a regulatory regime or or a political regime too. Um, and there's another way to think about this too: is the absolute uh, wealth. So, what do you personally have? So, you know, a lot of poor people in the United States lead, um, you know, decent lives. They have access to things like smartphones or uh, other other uh, comforts. You know, air conditioning, running water, things like that. They have cars, uh, but relative to whoops, relative to uh, other people. So, if we compare our wealth to others, like I was comparing myself to Neymar, they they are quite poor, right? The the rich in the, in the United States make uh, make a really comfortable life. They're doing very well uh, in in absolute and relative terms, right? Relative to those wealthy people, the, their gains relative to the poor people, their gains have been going uh, up and up and up. Okay, this is a it's kind of the same thing. Uh, one way to measure it is is uh, to take the twenty per, top twenty percent divided by the income share of the bottom twenty percent, often called the Gini coefficient, uh, and we can see that uh, what inequality in the United States has been increasing. Uh, again, this this is considered a problem if you value equality very much, uh, and if you want social socially mobile people, right? You want people to be able to live the American dream and go from being uh, not wealthy to wealthy, right? 
This might also uh, not matter because if you're a person that values skills and you think uh, you know people just aren't working hard, then that's the other way to look at it, right? Uh, income inequality around the world. This is data from about 2009. Um, so these are countries that are more unequal than we are. These are countries that are uh, more equal than we are. Right. So that's kind of interesting uh, data there. So one thing we could do is just do transfer payments. We just take money from a wealthy group and give it to somebody else. Okay. Uh, that's what those mean. Often called wealth wealth redistribution. Uh, I, you know, in the United States, it takes a form of welfare, the earned income tax credit, food stamps, really a lottery is a transfer payment. Um, they do not create new wealth, but they do create more equality. Okay, the reason they don't create new wealth is if I take this $20 bill from you and uh, give it to somebody else, I didn't make a new $20 bill, I just moved around the income that was already there. Okay, uh, and we can see that the, the number of transfers has, has really been increasing the last uh, a couple decades, right? So there are some other ideas for to get rid of income inequality. Uh, we could raise the minimum wage, or you could set a maximum wage, right? So the state of Arizona is going to raise the. We voted to raise the minimum wage to ten dollars an hour this year, and they're going to be ten ten fifty next year. Uh, in so far in Arizona, we haven't seen a decrease in employment. Uh, this may also be due to some demand effects. And uh, we're still we're still waiting on some data there, right? So we could also set a maximum wage. So one idea some some people on the on the left have had uh, set set CEO pay or, or executive pay uh, as a function of the worker pay, right? So it's a it's an un idea that would change uh, equality, right? Seattle's gone to a going up to fifteen dollars an hour, and uh, is having an effect on the teen employment, right? Teenager becoming less. Um, less important there, right? Or less employable. Okay. Uh, again, we could raise progressive taxes. Not too popular as I film this uh, this clip here, uh, but Kansas tried this. Um, I'm sorry, Kansas Kansas tried to lower uh, progressive tax rates. Sorry, they did the opposite of what I just said. Uh, and in California, there's sort of a movement to to uh, increase increase taxes, right? So we've got different models that we can look at. There's an idea of what's called a guaranteed minimum income. And this has uh, been voted down in Switzerland, but Finland and Kenya are trying it. Basically, everybody gets a certain minimum income, right? And so this is uh, an idea that would decrease, it's a transfer payment, it would decrease uh, some income inequality. So if that's something that we're very concerned with, that will uh, bend that um, uh, Lorenz curve back out, right? So I've got a couple practice questions in here. You know, I recommend you take a look at them, think about them. Uh, the, the, they're very close to the ones on the test. So that's income inequality. And there's some other uh, activities and clips that you can use uh, to further your understanding of this topic. Thank you.